and let us now learn about the in center of a triangle in center is the point of intersection of the angle bisectors of the interior angles of the triangle now what is meant by an angle bisector well angle bisector is a line that divides the interior angle into two equal parts or two equal angles right now there can be two types of angle bisectors interior angle bisectors or exterior angle bisectors both of them have the same feature right an angle bisector interior or exterior divides the angle into two equal parts or two equal angles so since there are three uh, angles in a triangle three interior angles in a triangle we have three angle bisectors and all these three angle bisectors meet at a point which is known as the in center of the triangle let us understand this with the help of a simple illustration so abc is a triangle now there are three interior angles here angle a angle b and angle c now as we know angle bisector is the one that divides the angle into two parts so if we draw a line from the vertex b such that the angle b gets divided into two parts right so this is the angle bisector let's say right so angle here is b by 2 and the angle here is also b by 2 b by 2 plus b by 2 will give the complete angle b here so simply angle bisector is a line that divides the angle into two equal parts or two equal angles so each angle becomes half on each of the sides there now before we move on and draw the other angle bisectors and see what an in center is let us understand an important property of an angle bisector if we extend the angle bisector of angle b here such that it meets the opposite side at point e right so be is the angle bisector for angle e here now the important point to be noted here is this angle bisector has divided the opposite side ac in a particular ratio right that ratio in which it divides the opposite side is equal to the ratio of the sides that contain the angle b let us understand this with the help of uh, the sides here now if you observe be is the angle bisector which divides uh, the side AC in a particular ratio right so we can see the ratio in which the sides are divided AE by EC this ratio will be equal to the ratio in uh, of the sides which contain the angle now what sides contain this angle AB and BC so we can say this will be equal to AB by BC likewise even for the other angle bisectors when we extend them so that they divide the opposite side in some ratio that ratio in which the opposite side gets divided will be equal to the ratio of the sides that contain the particular angle there right now let us draw the other angle bisectors for example for angle a the angle bisector is this let's say so this will be a by 2 the other part is also a by 2 it meets the opposite side at d now again going by the first point here we can say bd by bc the ratio in which the side has got divided bd by dc will be equal to the ratio of the sides which contains the angle a so what sides contain the angle a ab and ac so it can be taken as ab by ac and same goes for the third angle bisector so if you draw an angle bisector here right it will meet at some point in the opposite side however the point of intersection of all these three angle bisectors is known as the in center which is denoted by the letter i so in center is denoted by the letter i okay so what we have learned here so far that the in center is the point of intersection of angle bisector an angle bisector divides the angle into two equal parts and when we extend the angle bisector it divides the opposite side in a ratio which is equal to the ratio of the sides that contain the particular angle there so the intersection gives us the I in center which is denoted by i now what is special about this in center i here the point is this in center i is equidistant from all the three sides if we draw a perpendicular from the in center to each of the three sides the perpendicular length will be equal for all three of them right for example uh, let's say ie is the perpendicular drawn here angle is 90 degrees right likewise id is another perpendicular and if you draw one more perpendicular uh, let's say if right 90 degrees so the distance of the in center from all the three sides will be equal if will be equal to ie will be equal to id and by considering this distance as the radius right if you draw a circle we find that the circle will touch all the three sides internally and that circle is known as in circle so i is the center of a circle which touches all the three sides right so let me just draw a circle here an approximate circle right so this is known as the in circle right the circle here is called in circle in circle and the radius what is the radius ie or id or if is known as in radius which is denoted by the small letter r 
right so if you compare in center with circum center what do we see circum center is the center of a circle which passes through all the three vertices or it circumscribes the triangle whereas in center is the center of a circle which touches all the three sides or it is completely inscribed within the triangle and circum radius is the distance of the circum center from any of the vertex which is denoted by capital R whereas in radius is the distance of the in center from the three sides so if you draw a perpendicular we will get the distance there and all those three are equal that is the reason we are able to draw a circle which touches all these three sides and this in radius is denoted by the small letter R now like in case of circum center and ortho center we have seen that the position changes based on the type of triangle right like ortho center and circum center both lie outside if it is an obtuse angle triangle both of them lie inside if it is an acute angle triangle and for a right angle triangle ortho center is the vertex which contains right angle and circum center is the midpoint of the hypotenuse but in center always lies inside the triangle right whatever be the type of triangle uh, equilateral or scalene or right angle uh, obtuse angle or acute angle the in center is always inside the triangle because with the, with, with the help of in center we draw a circle which has to touch all the three sides internally so obviously it has to fall inside the triangle whatever be the type of triangle be so that's about in center which is the point of intersection of the internal angle bisectors and an important point here which I would like to repeat is that angle bisector always divides the opposite side in ratio which is equal to the ratio of the sides that contain the uh, a particular angle there okay now uh, the next point to be noted here is that uh, the angle made by any of the sides with the in center will be equal to 90 degrees plus half of the opposite angle now we have been discussing about such properties for each type of center so the property here for in center is that the angle made by any side with the in center will be equal to 90 degrees plus half of the opposite vertical angle right so for example if you look at the angle BIC angle BIC this angle right angle BIC will be equal to 90 degrees plus the angle A right so that's again an important conclusion which you need to remember angle BIC is equal to 90 degrees plus angle A Likewise, if you say side AC, the angle made by side AC with in center is AIC. So, angle AIC will be 90, sorry, this is 90 degrees plus half of the angle. 90 degrees plus half of the angle. So, this will be 90 degrees plus half of the opposite angle. What is half of the opposite angle? Angle B by 2. And the third side here, AB. The angle made by side AB with in center is AIB. So, angle AIB will again be 90 degrees plus the opposite angle is C. So, half of that opposite angle, angle C by 2. So, this is again a very important point which we need to remember so that questions based on this can be answered without any difficulty in about three, 2 to 3 seconds, right? For example, let's say uh, the angle A is equal to uh, 60 degrees, angle A is 60 degrees. Then the question says, what is the angle made by the opposite side with the in center? We know that the angle made by the opposite side with the in center is 90 degrees plus half of 60 degrees. Half of 60 is 30. So, 90 plus 30 which is 120 degrees. Likewise, the question made is that angle made at the uh, vertex A is 50, uh, 30 degrees. This is 30 degrees. This angle is 30 degrees. So, what will be BIC? 90 degrees plus half of 30 is 15 degrees. 90 plus 30, uh, 90 plus half of 30 which is 15. 90 plus 15 equals to 105 degrees. Right? So, this is how this particular uh, conclusion here will help us answer some of the questions based on in center without any difficulty okay uh, and now let us look at the in radius right that is the radius of in circle for an equilateral triangle in the previous case that is for circum center we have seen that for an equilateral triangle the circum radius is a by root 3 and for an equilateral triangle the in radius is a by 2 root 3 so if the triangle is equilateral for equilateral triangle the in radius r will be equals to a by 2 root 3 where a is the side of the uh, equilateral triangle right basically what happens is the in radius for an equilateral triangle is half of circum radius see we have already seen that circum radius r equals to a by root 3 circum radius r is a by root 3 for an equilateral triangle but for an equilateral triangle r is equal uh, small r that is in radius is equal to circum radius by 2 so a by root 3 by 2 will give us a by 2 root 3 right so this is again an important conclusion which you need to remember that is for an equilateral triangle the in radius is a by 2 root 3 where a is the side of the equilateral triangle 
Now before we move on to the next part of this session, let me also explain you another special property which holds for uh, the angle bisectors. Right? Here we have seen that in center is the point of intersection of the interior angle bisectors. But let's say if we take exterior angle bisectors, for example, if we extend the side AC, right? If we extend the, extend the side AC, what do we see? There is uh, an external angle here, right? The external angle here. Okay, interior angle is C, the exterior angle is let's say C dash. So if this is the vertex C, let's say this angle is C and this angle is C dash. Now the point to be noted here is that C dash, the angle C dash here will be equal to the sum of the other two angles, right? This is for uh, an exterior angle. Angle C dash will be equal to the sum of the other two angles. How do we come to this conclusion? C. If you look at the complete angle here, this is a straight angle. Angle C plus angle C dash should be equal to 180 degrees because it's a straight line. Now we know that in a triangle, sum of all the three angles is 180. So we can say that angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals to 180 degrees. Also, if we extend this line, we know that angle C plus angle C dash, angle C plus angle C dash is also equal to 180 degrees. From these two statements, it is clear that angle C dash here is equal to angle A plus angle B. So for any exterior angle, uh, it will be equal to the sum of the other two angles. For example, if we extend this line now, we get an exterior angle B dash. B dash will be equal to angle A plus angle C. Likewise, if this is extended to get the exterior angle A dash, angle A dash will be equal to angle B plus angle C. So that's one important point which you need to remember. That is the exterior angle at any vertex of a triangle is equal to the sum of the other two interior angles. And the second point here is if we draw angle bisectors for the exterior angle. Now angle bisector for interior or exterior means the same. It will divide the angle into two parts. So let's say we draw an angle bisector which divides this angle into two parts. Right. So this is C dash by 2. This also is C dash by 2. Likewise for uh, the side B we have some exterior angle. Let's say this is angle B dash. This is the vertex B here. Right. Now if you draw an exterior, uh, exterior angle bisector. Right. Let's say they meet at a point P. Right. Now the second conclusion which I was talking about is as follows. Now we have seen that the exterior angle bisectors for B and C have met at a point P. They intersect at a point P. So the angle made by the side BC with this point P will be equal to 90 degrees minus half of the other angle which is you know similar to what we have seen here. In this case angle made by the side BC with the in center is equal to 90 degrees plus half of other angle. But if we take exterior angle bisectors, then the angle made by the side BC with the point of intersection of exterior angle bisectors will be equal to 90 degrees minus half of the other angle there. So the conclusion that we can make here is angle BPC, right? BPC will be equal to 90 degrees minus half of the angle, which is the opposite angle, right? Half of opposite angle. So half of A by 2. So that's again an important conclusion which you need to follow. Likewise, uh, let's say if we get the point of intersection of exterior angle bisectors for A and C, then the angle made by APC, if the point of intersection is P, angle APC will be equal to 90 degrees minus half of angle B. And same goes for the next side as well. If we extend, draw the exterior angle bisectors which meet at a point P, then angle BPA or APB will be equal to 90 degrees minus half of angle C. So that's one special uh, point uh, which comes for angle bisectors, right? Basically related to exterior angle bisectors, right? So that's about in center and its various properties. So make sure that you remember about all these different types of centers and their properties properly so that it becomes easy for us to answer the questions based on any of these properties.